All right, uh, welcome once again. Uh, this time we're bringing you the NCAA breakdown for the Saratogian on the Record Sports Podcast. Right now we're in the studio, and I am joined by uh, the frequent flyer DJ Everly, who <laughs> flew in from Florida just to uh, get unveil his bracket here live and talk a little bit more about it. I was already in today, Saratogian and Troy Record, and you have both, both of those online, saratogian.com, troyrecord.com, and also his uh, column piece will be in Friday's uh, Community News, but uh, play gets underway tomorrow afternoon, so uh, yep. we, we want to get this out there and DJ talk about uh, how he got there and the teams he picked. So uh, so this is the second year in a row you've done this. It's the second year in a row I've done this for the paper. I've been doing this uh, for many, many years. But this is the second this is public record. record. Public record. And let me just start by saying, last year did not go so well. I'll, I'll say it. I'll get that out of the way. Uh, and I punished one of the teams that humiliated me. And one of them I did not. So hopefully they don't burn me again. Uh, so I'll just quickly go through uh, my bracket. Yep. Let me uh, sixteen. Yep. What we did was we set it up just like uh, President Obama. Yep. So we gave to President Obama a top billy. He went off just uh, before noontime, yep. just earlier today. And then uh, Joe Burke from Skidmore College, Darren Bennett, uh, Skidmore College women's coach, broke down the women's bracket. And now we're closing out uh, the day with the master prognosticator, uh, the bracket trifecta brought to you by the Saratogian on the Record Sports Podcast Network. And just like we did for uh, the coaches, we did the same thing for DJ. We set up, we set up the brackets here. So uh, let's talk about the South real quick and uh, uh, Kansas, Maryland, and then Miami, Villanova. Yeah. Were there any... Any upset getting in the South? Okay, so for me, I actually, in all four regions, I picked the nine seed over the eight seed. So the South, it was UConn over Colorado. UConn's a team that's very dangerous in March when, March when they get hot at their conference tournament. We saw in 2014 when they made that run through the American Athletic Conference and then went on to win the, you know, the title. And then, you know, this way, I got being Colorado in the first round, but, you know, the buck stops here for them against Kansas. Kansas is too tough of a team. It's tremendously talented. They have deep depth with Perry, depth with Perry Ellis, Frank Mason, Wayne Selden Jr. Um, looking at the rest of the bracket, you know, I was close. I sort of watching Wichita State play last night. I considered putting them over Arizona, but I just, you know, I kept it clean like that. Um, you know, looking at the rest of the bracket, it was pretty much chalk for me. I do like Maryland over Cal, as you can see, I have them in the Sweet 16, and that's not because Kevin Hurd's going there next year. Um, it's because, you know, Maryland's a tremendous team with Melo Trimble and Rashid Suleiman who played at Duke and hurt my Syracuse teams back when Duke played Syracuse a couple years ago in that, uh, over, over the victory at home and carried home. And then, of course, the uh, night that Jim Mayheim ripped off his suit and got technical, uh, you know, he's a big factor in that as well. Uh, so that's where we get to here with Kansas, Maryland, and then Miami and Villanova. Um, yeah, I feel pretty comfortable about this. It doesn't. It starts to get a little chalky as we, a uh, little, little murky as we keep mm -hmm. going. But I feel the best probably about uh, the South region. The South, and we go to the West where we've got Oregon versus Baylor, yep. Texas versus Oklahoma, yep. and again this is in uh, this is in the uh, Sweet Sixteen here. Yep. Uh, Oregon, Baylor. I don't think too any surprise there with picking Baylor. Baylor will surprise people. It was. I, Baylor was the toughest team for me this tournament. They were a team that burned me last year. They lost in the first. They were lost in the first. You know, the round of sixty-four. This year, I I, I kept with them. You know, they got Rico Gathers, great tremendous player down low. Wants to be the next Antonio Gates playing the NFL. Um, you know, going to, he's going to stay another year. Baylor seems like to go play football because he's a senior. But there's a possibility they could lose to Yale in the first round. Um, that was something that really scared me. You know, a lot of people were predict. A lot of people said there's a poss real possibility. I stuck with my gut and I kept the Bears. Uh, I like the way they play. I have only seen them a couple times. Uh, you know, per uh, on this year I watched from the Big 12 tournament. I was impressed. Uh, Texas is a little bit of a, a surprise. Again, being a six seed, being Texas A&M to get there. They did lose to Texas A&M earlier in the year, but have had a lot of quality wins and they have Shock Smart who was a former VCU coach, we all know what VCU has done the tournament in the past, and he's a tremendous coach, got them there. Oklahoma, pretty easy uh, to get there. It really wasn't that too tough. Uh, Buddy Heel and Co. Buddy Heel's a tremendous player. Um, he's you know he's a guy that's carried them all year. They've been number one seed throughout. Well, not throughout, but a lot often in the season. And then Oregon, the number one seed. People think they're an overseeded number one seed. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Michigan State, which we'll get to in the Midwest in a little bit, deserves to be that number one seed. But it's an athletic. 
Oregon team who's playing really well right now. Um, and the, but the question is, can they continue their hot streak? Because they, they routed Utah in the Pac-12 championship game. The question is, can they carry that momentum in the tournament? So we'll see. Gotcha. Now we go over to the east. We have North Carolina versus Kentucky. And then West Virginia against Xavier. Yeah. Uh, North Carolina, you know, West Virginia, Xavier, all expected to be there because of the two and the three and the one. Uh, Kentucky is the four, so actually this is all this is all chalk. But Kentucky has an interesting, you know, matchup. I was talking with Shane Marshall earlier, um, you know, uh, before we stepped in here to the podcast studio. S Stony Brook performed, you know, they could be a problem. But uh, I, I like Kentucky a lot. They're a team that has really caught on. I like they, they, you know, they get hammered because they're in the SEC. But this is a, right now. This is a, a mad Kentucky team. Feels that they were a bit slighted being a four seed with Texas A&M being a three seed, and Texas A&M lost to Kentucky in the SEC championship. Um, and Kentucky's been playing really well now. So you know, when you get a pissed off Kentucky squad with John, you know, with Coach Cal and the way that they are just, you know, he he went on after such and Sunday and was furious that he thought his team deserved to be better than a four seed. And you know, if honestly if they were a three seed against in the Texas in Texas A&M spot. You know, they have a much easier path, but because North Carolina, is, again, is playing really good basketball, defense playing really well. Uh, West Virginia, a.k.a. Press Virginia, an aggressive defense. You saw that in the Big 12 championship game, uh, championship game and the tournament. You know, they de defeated Oklahoma to get there with Buddy Hill, was able to shut them down, which has not happened often this year. And then Xavier, a team out of, you know, the Big East. Uh, you know, they're, luckily for them, you know, they're a team that could be up, they could have been upset if they had some tougher competition. I had Pittsburgh beating uh, Wisconsin in the first round, a ten versus seven upset uh, to get there. Everything else for me was was actually chalk, except for like I said, with the nine C being the eight. With the, that was Providence beating a USC team that had things a bit overrated. And then uh, we're gonna talk about the Midwest here, possibly a little Mac bias, as you've got you can Virginia, say that. Virginia you, you, you versus can, Iona yeah. and Utah over Michigan State. A lot so. of people, a lot of people looking at this, and knowing that I've been covering, I covered Seattle for us this year. I've seen Iona play twice. You can say, yeah, you can just call me a homer, but I have some reasoning, and there's actually some experts who, and analysts who are saying I own as a team that's possibly can make a Cinderella run. Uh, Joe Lunardi, he breaks down every single team heading into the tournament. He said Iona, he thought he called the Iona upset in the first round, and from there, if you're going to be a four seed, you might as well beat the five seed, make it a little bit interesting, keep going forward. Um, but quite the thing is, teams that have to make Cinderella stories, what they are able to do is they have they have a superstar, a playmaker that I can take over and control games. His name's A.J. English. Guy's a talented guard, 6'4 guard. You know, if you listen to what Jimmy Passer said, and there's, you know, the presser at the end of the MAC tournament the, after they lost the semifinals, finals, he said he thinks that, you know, A.J. English is a NBA type player. I said on the podcast before, you know, he, you know, he texted or called Brad Stevens and was like, hey, you got to bring this guy in the Celtics. Um, I think A.J. English, best player I, I've ever seen, better than Justin Robinson, who won the MAC Player of the Year. And, you know, I, I just I think that this Iona team can be dangerous. They have a great three point shooting. Isaiah Williams, English down low. If they you know if they get here to Sweet Sixteen, they're have to, gonna have to beat Purdue unless Purdue gets upset by Arkansas Little Rock, which is a bit of a trendy pick right now. But I kept Purdue you know going uh, there in that round. But they Purdue has some size, and luckily so does Iona. Um, they have Aaron Roundtree who was playing at Wake Forest before transferring, and then they also have Jordan Washington who if he gets out felt if he stays out felt trouble he'll be in good shape, and they'll be in good shape. And the bottom of the bracket, bottom of Utah, Utah, Michigan State. You know, I will say at Syracuse beating Dayton in, in the first round. Um, if they're playing any other two seed, if they're playing Xavier, I would, I would say I'd have Syracuse over Xavier. But Michigan State is a team that you'll see I have going far this tournament. I like them a lot. Denzel Valentine, in my opinion, is the best player in college basketball. You know, he's a triple double waiting to happen. I said in my column, he averages about 17 and a half points, seven and a half assists, and seven and a half rebounds. And that's an incredible stat line, if you ask me, for a guy who was injured part of the season. So uh, also keeping in this with the NCAA uh, uh, bracketology special on the Saratoga and the Record uh, podcast network, we got to talk about uh, the one team that you like that's not in this tournament. That is Monmouth. I, I you know I, I brought this up when I called in the face off. The face off. I wanted to make this point, and I've, I've said it in another comment before for another website. I am very disappointed, and I'm not the only one with the selection committee and the way they treat Monmouth. Look. This admits the selection committee asks these teams to go go schedule these tough road games against big, you know, BCS schools, the Pac schools of Pac-12, schools of the SEC, ACC school of that. They did that. They went to USC, beat USC. They went to UCLA, beat UCLA. You know, they beat Notre Dame, beat Georgetown. USC, I know, I understand UCLA is not very good this year, and Georgetown is not very good this year, but USC is in the field, and so is Notre Dame. 
And, you know, what more can a team do, a, a 27-win team, let me remind you, do, aside from winning their conference championship? You know, they go on the road, they have 13 road wins and 17 neutral court slash road wins. Best number in the country. Nobody else has more. And they have 27 wins, which puts them right at the top, too. They can't. They could have done anything more they want. And when you got a team like Tulsa, who is, I think is a disgrace to be putting in the tournament. You know, we talked about this. There's no Louisville, no SMU who both deserve right. to be in. Opportunities. There's an opportunity to put someone like Monmouth in. Monmouth, this, this isn't going to happen every year. And, you know, who knows what happens next year. And this is a, it was an opportunity that the selection committee could have made the right statement. Instead, they make a wrong statement. It basically says, listen, mid-majors, unless you win your conference championship or beat, you know, two or three teams on the road that are Final Four type teams, you know, UNC or Michigan State or Kentucky, which they don't get to schedule all that often. These teams don't want to play these good teams. And that's the only way you're getting in. And that, that's a tough thing. It's really tough to cover, call, you cover team, schedule comp games with Kansas, North Carolina, Oklahoma. Because they don't, hey, they're not going to travel to you because there's no benefit whatsoever. And it's not like, you know, when you see Syracuse scheduling a game with LeMoyne to open the season, they don't have anybody near them that's a big school. What, Rutgers? You go to Rutgers, that's not really that big of a deal for Monmouth. That's, that's what makes this really tough. Um, but they do have a moment that I believe has an opportunity. They have some tough teams on their schedule next year. I want to say UNC, I'm not 100% sure. So they'll have an opportunity to make another statement. You know they're going to be pissed off. They're, they're going to return a lot of people. They'll be a good team once again. All right. Uh, we're not going to mess around with any touchscreen uh, issues here like uh, they had on the NCAA selection. Yeah. So we're, kind of with, we're going old school here, pen and paper. Uh, so let's uh, continue on. No commercial breaks here. Uh, let's take us through it. Kansas versus Maryland. Does Maryland get it this year, or do they got to wait for Kevin Herter next year? They're going to have to wait for Kevin Herter this year. Maryland, as good as team they are, Kansas, phenomenal team, top seed overall. Like I said, Perry Ellis down low, great backcourt with you know Wayne Selden Jr. and um, Frank Mason. I see Kansas going far this year. All right. Uh, the other side of the south bracket, Miami, Villanova. This is a tough one for me. Villanova, for years, they've been a two-seed or a one-seed, and they haven't gotten far. Well, it they're going to stay in the Sweet 16. I like Miami. It's, you know, a tested team out of the ACC. Made a bit of an ACC tournament run. You know, they were, I think they were a three seed in the ACC this year. I, I like them a lot. Um, they're going to go to the Elite Eight, Stan. All right, so we're going to put it in Miami. And then going down to the West, that Oregon-Baylor matchup. Upset alert! Upset special, baby! I like Baylor over Oregon. That, they have the ability to, you know, out-rebound you on the offensive glass, that's big, and they're a high-energy team, so is Oregon. I think Oregon's team's going to, you know, end up running out, um, and I, I, I like I like Baylor. This was this matchup, and they match up in the first round against Yale. I could be extremely wrong, and I could have Baylor out, and Iona could be out tomorrow, because they both play tomorrow. So, we're going to see, but I really like the Baylor Bears. All right, and then uh, the... The uh, second half of the West Bracket, Texas, Oklahoma. Texas's dream run ends here. I like Oklahoma here. Buddy Heald, phenomenal player. He's going to lead them, continue to lead them this season. Okay. All right, we're halfway there. Going back to the East, this is, uh, you know, everyone's dream of uh, uh, NCAA final. We've seen this before. Yeah, this is North Bloods Carolina, right Kentucky. This is a battle for Chapel Hill. So what do you think? I like Kentucky. Uh, Kentucky is a team that I've been hot on since January 31st when they lost to uh, when they lost to Kansas in you know in a game in a regular season game by only a few points. I like what they're able to do. Tyler Eulis, one of the best players in court. The only reason he's not up for has real consideration for the Wooden Award is because he's five eight. They also have Jamal Murray, who can just shoot in the lights out right now. They got some uh, you know some depth and size with. Uh, so, you know, some of those guys down low, down there, uh, Mar uh, Marcus, uh, oh my god, the, actually I have the paper right in front of me, Marcus Lee, thank gosh, he, luckily we have that there, but you know, he's just one of a handful of guys who can get the job done down low for them. All right, West Virginia, Xavier, who's it going to be? Is it, we're going to see Upset City or? Upset City, Press Virginia. I, I like what they're able to do on defense. Uh, you saw what they're, and you know, Xavier, they just, to me, they don't stack up. I understand they're a two seed, but they don't stack up to a Press Virginia, West Virginia. That defense, you know, Bob Huggins, he's going to keep them going. All right, and then, uh, you know, does the dream continue out of the MAC? Virginia versus Iona. It, it does not. Westford, this is, you know, 
Iona, they're a great shooting team. They're going to prove that to teams in the first two rounds. But West Virginia's defense is just too good. Um, and I, I just see the road ending there for Iona. It's gonna be, it was a great season, a great, great way for a guy like A.J. English to end his career. And then finally, uh, Utah versus, versus Michigan State. I think this one gets probably one of the easier picks here. Yeah, Mich Michigan State, pretty clear call. Utah is a very talented team, don't get me wrong, but Denzel Valentine, this Michigan State team is on a roll right now. All right, so we're going to type in uh, the Sparties. All right. Who will be in the Final Four? No commercial needed. Here we go. Uh, the South region. Who's going to capture the South? Kansas, Miami. To me, it's pretty easy. Kansas, they're a very hot team right now. Uh, they have a lot. They're one of the most talented teams in the field. Um, and it keeps on rolling for the Jayhawks. Rock Chalk, Jayhawk. All right, next up, another great battle. West champions, yeah, Baylor, a, Oklahoma. Who's it going to be? This is a Big 12 battle. Um, I do like Oklahoma in this. Buddy Heald and Co. is going to keep on rolling to the Final Four. And moving along to the east, Kentucky, West Virginia, locals again. Wildcats are back in the Final Four once again. I, I'm very high in this squad. They have a lot of talent. They've been there before, obviously. Uh, and the thing, you know, it's not like last year's Kentucky team who was filled with a bunch of freshmen. You know, they had nine McDonald's All-Americans, four future uh, lottery picks, and they had Carl Anthony Towns, who's the number one overall pick on their team last year, went to the Timberwolves. It seems different. They got a lot of, you know, they got some, a little bit of, they're a little bit older now. Some of these guys have been there before. Um, I, I really like, you know, you got Alex Poitras and Marcus Lee down low. I really, I, I like this team. North Carolina is hot right now. This is not a favorable pick. You know, ESPN's been tracking who the, the, the way they have it, you know, breaking out the most brackets sure. they're filling out. You know, can't, I believe it was Kansas is number one. Michigan State was two. North Carolina was three. And then I think Kansas might have been four or five with Oklahoma. So. All right, and then uh, going down to the Midwest, Virginia versus the Spartans, Michigan State. Fun fact, these two teams have met each other in the last two tournaments. Each time Michigan State has won. That is going to remain true this time. Sparty moves on. All right. All right, here we go, the final four. Kansas, Oklahoma, where does this go? This is round three for these two teams. They have played each other twice before. Kansas won both. Third time is not the charm for the Sooners. Kansas moves on to the National Championship game. And uh, Kentucky, your dream squad there against the squad. Spartans of Michigan State. What's it going to be? Wildcats move on. Look, you can, I under, Tom is a great coach, but I think there's just too much talent. Kentucky was a preseason number two. Um, and obviously they've had some ups and downs this year, but a lot of ups right now. All right, it comes the big night. Uh, you know, everything for us will be put to bed, so we'll be watching yeah. it on the big screen at some <laughs> local establishment. Uh, I don't think we'll be doing a live Periscope uh, that night for that event. Uh, Kansas versus Kentucky. Who's going in the box as the number one team in the country? These teams play each other on January 31st, like I already said. Kansas beat Kentucky. When that happened, I wrote this down on my phone. You can see, I even have it in my notes. I have it with the date January 31st. Everything. I took a photo of it. I have Kentucky, I had Kentucky versus Kansas. I liked what Kentucky was doing. I thought that Kansas would get the best of them this time. And I thought by the season's end, because, you know, we're looking at, this is almost, you know, two months. This is two, by the time, this will be two or three, two, a little bit more than two months later. Kentucky's matured. They have more scoring threat. The thing is, they can score the ball a lot better. They just have to show up, and I think they're going to show up on this bright lights. You know, this team that was destined to win a national championship last year when they came into the tournament undefeated, lost in the Final Four, to a talented and great Wisconsin squad led by Frank Kaminsky. They're not going to let this happen again. I like Kansas. I like Kentucky a lot. I like Kansas a lot. But I'm going with the Wildcats. All right. So 72-66. 72-66. All right, that's it. So uh, DJ Everly, our master prognosticator, has uh, definitely put everything on the record. Second yeah. consecutive year, he's published his bracket. Published my bracket. Hey, I, I run a pool. You could very well copy me if you wanted to and put it right in there. 
the, no obligations to split if they copy the bracket. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, they don't. Have, yeah, no, they don't have to give me some of the money when we have a perfect bracket. So this is the number one bracket. We talked about this on Monday's uh, face off while you were uh, soaking in the sun in Florida. Yeah. The, this is the number one. This is, the this one I care is about. the DJ this bracket. One went, this one went so much effort went into this to make sure I put out the best possible bracket because I don't like to be embarrassed, Dan, and it was not fun last year. How many other brackets you fill out for some of those other pools just to kind of like? I have. Uh, I will be honest. I have filled out one that's called an upset special bracket. It, my final four is Syracuse, Kentucky, Maryland, and Oregon. And then I have Maryland, Syracuse in the final, and I have Syracuse winning it all. I also have Iona in the Elite Eight. That's an upset special bracket. I have Cal losing in the first round. I listened to a lot of the people calling for a lot of upsets. I, I wish I Wichita State being Arizona. Um, I'm trying to think of it. I think I have Chattanooga beating Indiana in the East. Indiana's a five seed. Uh, I had Baylor. I think I had, well, I had Baylor losing this time. Um... Yeah, that's the way. That was one, and then I will make. A, I'm gonna make another one tomorrow morning when I wake up. Uh, that's one that I, because this one I make early on. Really, this is what I let my like. This is what I fully believe. This other one is what I hear from people, and I, like I take, I watch ESPN, and I take in all that stuff. That final four is gonna look a little bit different than this. It's gonna be UNC at the top. I believe this may change by the time I go tomorrow, but UNC is at the top. Mission State still, Oklahoma, and. Actually, I think I think Maryland might be in this one, and Kansas is in the other one. But it could be Kansas, and it's Oklahoma, Michigan State. Michigan State takes it. Gotcha. So uh, three check, brackets. Check, check, check tomorrow. You know what? Uh, DJ will be uh, in front of the screen, and then on Twitter. Uh, I mean, if it Twitter. comes close, I may have to <laughs> periscope me watching a couple games at the end, especially. Iona, which plays that too. I'm not sure where Baylor plays yet. But. And uh, you can follow him, DJ Everly 66, yeah. DJ E B E R L E 66 on Twitter. Uh, this wraps up the uh, trifecta of selections. Uh, coach Joe Burke with the men's bracket, uh, head coach of Skidmore College. Uh, Darren Bennett picked the uh, women's bracket, probably a little bit more challenging because not a lot of information out there, but we won't rely well, on his experience. Picking the national champions, not. Yeah, <laughs> getting, up getting the, there for the upsets was probably the hardest part you talked about. And then we rounded out uh, with DJ with the uh, published. Uh, uh, bracket here, uh, the copy of the Troy record. Sit right there. That's it. That's so, it right uh, there. DJ. So it was in print, and then we recapped it again in this podcast. So uh, again, this is our NCAA bracket special. We're back in the studio uh, tomorrow on the Saratoga and the Record Sports Podcast studio. Tomorrow yeah. we're going to do our suburban sports roundup. We're going to talk a lot of our state championship runs. Uh, we actually have an interview with Coach Joe Burke about uh, the Liberty League run and the NCAA run by the Thoroughbreds uh, in their season, and also asked him about his phone. You know, his phone was blowing up for Liberty League titles in six years, so uh, he's been getting some calls. So we actually talked to him about that, and he was kind enough to answer that question, and we'll have that on tomorrow's podcast, as well as uh, the, the, gang of, the gang of five, four or five, the, the gang that's here. Yep. We're going to just give you our final four. We'll make it quick. you got DJs now, but the rest of us... Uh, the other three guys will give you all of their explanations, and uh, I will give you my four guesses. <laughs> uh, so, but I can tell you right now, my wife Rita's taking sit. We'll take UConn all the way, both men and women, every year. They're going to double up, she says. And I know Mom Rose Hootie. I got to do her bracket to get it in uh, online through the ESPN uh, tournament, uh, challenge. tournament challenge. Just type in Saratogian on the record or Saratogian, you'll pop up. Yep. Free bracket, and uh, the best bracket gets the pie their favorite sports writer. So uh, we'll do that on the podcast. We'll periscope that. And up, this um, is the bracket I put in that challenge. And this, this is the challenge. And from what I understand, DJ likes lemon meringue pie. So if you're the lucky winner, uh, stop pie. by. Chocolate so we'll... Uh, chocolate, cream? chocolate cream? Chocolate cream. So uh, make, sure it's, make sure it's a big one. Probably chocolate cream does a little... A little easier. A little bit easier on the mug. Yep. The yep. mug shot. Yeah, we don't, we don't want a blueberry going up my Pumpkin nose. would be bad. Pumpkin would be a tough one because that's like it a is. lot of force. It would just, you, would have a, you would have to have a lot of force. That's a thick, thick pie. Yeah, so we're going to go with a nice, big, creamy pie. Big, so. yeah. big uh, chocolate. Uh, if, somebody, if somebody beats you. Cream. That's, right, that's right. That's if right. you're number one, you can pie the boss. Because yeah. Dave Johnson's in that too. So, uh, again, DJ Everly, Stan Hootie, uh, thank you uh, for tuning in. We're catching this on YouTube, the video, audio on SoundCloud. 
Saratogian on the record. So uh, for the whole gang, Coach Burt, Coach Bennett, DJ, Stan Hootie, on Twitter, STNHDY, as always, especially this weekend, enjoy those games. Enjoy those games. Because there's lots of them. <laughs>